Hi, it's Sandy Parker, and welcome to Crafting for Almost Everyone. Today we're going to make a storage system that I'm going to store dies and stamps and other miscellaneous. I hope you'll stay tuned. Well, I think if you've watched my videos, you've seen that I have been subscribing to uh, the Paper Craft Society kits that come out monthly, and they come in these really cool storage packets. Mine's upside down, clearly, and um, it, it has nice pockets that one holds their stamps, one holds dies, and the other one holds paper and miscellaneous things. And I think it would be really handy to start using these and labeling the side. This one I'm going to change to something that says like Christmas or birds, and the one I'm going to be making today is going to say something like crafts or crafty nest because I... Um, got a bunch of stamps and dies that are crafting related and I thought it'd be fun to have them all in one spot. So with that being said I made a template and I think we've got what we need. So the first thing you're going to start with you're going to need three pieces of 12 by 12 scrapbook paper and you're going to want it to have a solid core on it which means it's going to be all um, that color through and through. If you cut it, it won't be white on the edge. And I'll tell you how you know if it's solid core or not. It says it on the packaging. But also, if you look in this edge, see how it's green the whole way through? If you get a uh, paper that's not solid core, you'd see white there. Here is the paper pad I'm using. It's from American Crafts. Is that the back of it? I don't remember it looking like that. Yeah, that's the back, crazy. Okay, there we go. It's called Smooth Cardstock Pad. That's also important for me because I don't like textured cardstock, so it says smooth. And it should say solid core somewhere. Don't know where it said it, but I know when I bought it on Amazon, I saw that it said solid core. Regardless, this is what you're looking for. Something that will say smooth. Something that in the description it says solid core. And if it doesn't, ask the question. The other papers I'm going to use to decorate with are going to be from this pad from Joann's. It's a very lightweight cardstock, and it's, it's strictly to layer and decorate with. And it's called Flower Garden, and you get 180 sheets. It's great for making envelopes, too. Of course, I don't represent anyone. You know, I'm just uh, telling you these things that I like and where to find them. I always give you the information on how to do the project below the video and I also will give you links to the products but I recommend that you price shop because I want you to get the best deal possible and if the prices that um, or the links I give you aren't the best price I want you to look find a better price so we're going to cut three pieces of 12 by 12 cardstock to two of them are going to be 9 by 12 and one of them is going to be 6 by 9 and make sure that's right. That's nine and six. Correct. And we're going to attach them in a long row like this. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some tear tape and on the very bottom, well, not the edge of this, on the nine inch length, you're going to put a row of tear tape on the edge and I'm I gave myself room for half an inch to overlap so that's about a half an inch and then on the next sheet we're gonna put the same thing two rows because we want to make sure that this is nice and um, well adhered we're going to end up with a really, really long piece of paper. So I'm going to line these up together and very carefully. Okay, there's two of them connected. And we'll take off the backing on our last two. And then we're going to start our scoring. This is not a hard project to make. It's just a little bit cumbersome because it's so long until we fold it. And then we're going to attach our last piece to it. 
I kind of have better luck doing this kind of straight across instead of, watch out, I got stuff in the way. Okay, let's see if I can line it up with my scoreboard. I think that's pretty good. All right, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to score. And as you know, my scoring board has this crazy thing at the end that it was originally, it was a um, Martha Stewart cutting and scoring board. And they don't make them anymore. And I uh, found mine. I really liked it, but I have never used this to cut with. But it works great to hold my stylus in, you know, in that little compartment on the side there. So I never have to worry about my stylus popping out. In case you wonder why I never got rid of that plastic thing, that's why. And we're going to score. Our first score is going to be at six and three quarters. And seven. So from our second score, so I'm going to fold both of these scores so that we know exactly where they all are. Okay. I'm going to hold my paper on the second score. You gotta, because this is so long, unfortunately, I'm sorry I have to do it this way. We've got it folded up to our second score. Okay. From that score to where we're going to score next, we're going to score at six and three quarters again. So hopefully you follow that. You want to make sure that your paper is in there straight and you're scoring again at six and three quarters. And then our second score this time is seven and one eighth. So ooh, six and three quarters. That's that one. And seven and one eighth. Okay, then we're going to fold those I'm only folding my second score because that's the one that matters for what we're going to score next now from this score again you're going to put this is again the second score, the one I scored at seven and one eighth. You're going to fold the paper up and make sure it's to the edge of your scoreboard. And this score we're going to score at six and three quarters. And seven and one quarter. really nice strong okay so then I think we're done with our scoring nope we're gonna do some more scoring while we're while we've got the scoreboard we might as well do it for our pockets you're gonna need three pieces of eight and a half by eleven paper and I've cut these down to uh, seven and three quarters by, I think it's ten, yeah, seven and three quarters by ten on your ten inch length at the very bottom or top, depending on how you look at this. You're going to score at one and one quarter inch. and then one and a half. That's all the scoring you're going to do there. Then on the seven and three quarter inch length, 
you're going to score again at one and a quarter. And one and a half. Let me do the same for the other two pieces. That's all of our scoring for now. I think it's all of our scoring in general. We'll go back to our first paper. The reason that I'm going to cover mine with another piece of paper is because, you know, when you connected the papers, you're going to always have lined somewhere. And in my case, I have a line in the center of the second piece and at the at, in the end of the last scores. That doesn't even make sense. Anyway, just what I'm saying. So let's see if this folds right. The reason my paper is longer here is because they made this lovely little flap and I wanted to give myself some wiggle room to do that with, you know, the, the curve. And the way I thought I would do this, because why wouldn't you, is I thought I would just slide it right up to this one. Okay, I'm probably going to have to lay it down. And I'm just going to trace it. You know what I'm saying? That ought to be the easiest way to do it, right? We'll trace it and then we can just cut it out. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to just trace it and cut it. Got my little pencil. Of course, you'll be able to easily erase this. So then we'll just take our scissors. I'm taking these long bladed scissors. I got these from a company called Hay. They are from Italy, and they're the the actual type of scissor is the Phi P H I. And um, Sam Kelcott uses these, and they're very long bladed, but they're made specifically for cutting paper, and they are really nice for cutting long strips, if that makes any sense. And I'm hoping that I can do a decent job of cutting this without having to freak myself out a little bit. And I'm also going to close my, um, my book with velcro like they do because i want to make sure my book looks like theirs does i gotta and i did all my scores exactly like their scores so some of them the one that's a little bit wonky that's not a problem because that's how they did theirs too so it should be fine um, these are going to be our pockets and let me show you the pocket so you know what we're talking about here's what they did with theirs they made these scores and I'm going to fold my scores so you can see what we're talking about. I'm going to cut out just this bottom square up to this first set of score lines. We're not going to get rid of anything but that little corner. Okay. Then we're going to make it so that our pocket folds in kind of like that, but we'll also have to cut it on a diagonal. And all I'm going to do is cut from, from this fold to this fold. I'm going to cut it straight across there. Okay, this is our inner score line, and this is our inner score line. Hope we can see those two marks. What we're going to do is we're going to put this up to the cut line so that this little corner and that little corner are both in our cut line. So hopefully you can see that score line right there. And then I'm going to turn this one so that the other line is right in my cut. that move and check it before you cut it because sometimes the paper wiggles a little bit and if it does then you end up having um, a, a not straight edge okay then 
because you had to cut it, you're going to also need to cut this piece. When we fold it up, this is what your pocket's going to look like. So what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to cut so that nobody can see it. You don't want anybody to see that paper there and here. Like that. Everybody with me? We'll do it again so that you so you get the gist of it. I just want to make sure that it's really clear. And so then you just cut. That's the second one. So then I won't make you watch me do the third one. I think you probably got the gist of it by now. All right, so I lied to you a little bit. You're going to want to make sure that you cut out all of the scored areas on the bottom right side. So you're going to get rid of this section too. So you're going to be ending up with no scores in the bottom right corner. So you're going to cut up. I'm sorry about that. This is my first time making it. This is when you get rid of the, the boo-boos, you know. I should have made one and then made the video. But, you know, I get so excited about making a video about something that I want to give you the whole progress, you know, as I go. Then you want to fold it in on the second score. You want to fold it so that you have both your four folds, your scores folded. And you're going to just take your scissors and you're going to just kind of follow that angle. Same with the bottom. You're going to fold both of your folds like that. And then you're going to take your scissors and you're going to cut up to that score line. So those are our pockets. Now we're ready to basically put it together. We need to I cut some papers that I thought would be pretty to surround the outside with. So the papers I've chosen are these leafy patterns. And I'm going to start with this outside edge. I think the best thing to do would be to just, um, because it's so lightweight, because it's so lightweight, you are going to be wanting to put this on with a tear tape and a little bit of wet glue. You want to use tear tape because your paper is, my paper, is lightweight. And any lightweight paper is going to be really tough to get to lay down with wet glue and not look a little bit weird. It will be just a little bit wonky looking. And you want to make sure that if you can avoid that, you do. So we're going to probably use, I think I'm going to use, beside tear tape, I think I'm going to use a um, glue stick. Because a glue stick w won't leave that kind of bubbly look behind. So let me, let me put my tear tape on a couple of these so we can, I'm just going to have Rich cut this out. Nobody really wants to see me put tear tape on stuff. All right, so first things first, we're going to start with our far left side. And I'm going to add glue stick. Hopefully it will not be so globby in a second. And I'm going to put a lot of it on the, on the score lines because you need to make sure that your score lines, that you have glue there. Also adding a lot to my edge of my paper, which is right there. I'm gonna put my paper going in this direction. Alrighty, I forgot to turn the camera back on and I laid down one page, so now I'm gonna lay down the second one. And this one already has tear tape on the back of it. And I'm just going to add some more glue. So now I'm going to just, hopefully, lay this one on top of the piece before it. 
hopefully make sure it's straight. All right. And last is the part that we're going to put on this. And that that is why we saved this piece so I could trace around um, whatever I'm going to use to make it work, right? I think I might go almost to the very edge. Maybe I'll go all the way to the edge, just because I can. Then I can just trim it from underneath if I go all the way to the edge. You know what I'm saying? I know. At this point, I barely make sense, right? I'm also going to decorate mine because on my side flap, the you know, like on the top flap, I've got uh, a gap of the place where my paper attaches to itself. Nobody really wants to see that, do they? All right, I'm going to just trim this paper off. Okie dokie. We are rolling right along. I'll be using Velcro as my closure. I have these white squares. I think I might have gotten them from um, Dollar Tree. So the place you want to line them, put them in, is in this section. And I would say maybe about there. And then we're just going to close her down like that. And I'm going to let it sit for just a second. So to cover our pockets, I'm going to use this paper that I found in the paper pack that had the green paper in it. And what I decided I would do is my plan. I'm going to take my this is my pocket and I'm going to make my pocket so that all of the folds are folded flat down on it because I just need to be able to trace this once on one of these because all of my uh, all of my pockets are the same size and what I want to do is I want to lay this onto that and I'm going to put a little bit hopefully of tape runner stuck to my finger because I've got some glue stuck to me that I can't seem to get off. Okay, good. I've got a decent amount of tape runner on there. So what I want to do is I want to put it almost to the very edge, very slight border, like that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take our pencil. I'm going to trace this on the bottom and on the side, but when I trace this, I need to go in just a little bit, like cut in it into the lines, a very, very small amount so that I get a border. So hopefully you can see my pencil line. Can you see that pencil line? Now, if I can, and I hope I can, I'd really like to be able to cut these other pieces so that I can get the same design on the other two, and hopefully that's a possibility, or it's not. What I'm going to do is I'm going to fake this and I'm going to come back. I'll let you know when I come back if I changed up what I did before. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put our pockets in and be ready to roll. So the first thing I want to do, I've already put some tear tape on the back of my pockets. But I want to make sure that my that if I lay it down wrong, I can move it. And so I have little gaps here in the spots that I don't have any tear tape. And I also want to kind of put it at spots that I think are going to be at risk. This here's my plan. If I just put this piece of paper, butt it up against the other one, everything should work, right? should that's what we're going with should and I'm gonna put a piece or I'm gonna put this in with wet glue there butt it up against that piece like that and that way hopefully we won't have any kind of problems with our buddies not playing together all right so then we're gonna put our next piece in to the score line, but not over it. It's looking cute. 
I'm pretty happy with it so far. Let's see if we can get everything in it that I want to put in it. Okay. All right. Now let's close her up. I think I should have put this um, Velcro further out, but anyway, that's beside the point at this point. You know. Right now, I've got to worry about something else. I'm going to decorate the front. What I decided to decorate with, I cut out this from the same paper pad. I thought it'd be fun just to do um, just kind of a, something that I guess is almost unexpected. So I'm going to put that there. And then I have these little things that I thought I would glue there. And then I have this little butterfly that I thought I would put up in here where there's um, there's another line. Okay, so let's glue this down. And then we just need to... I should have used the small Velcro because this larger velcro really fights me and doesn't want to doesn't want to stay attached doesn't want to I probably should just figure out a way if I could cut it in half and maybe just use half of it because it's really it's really fighting me there's that let me fill it up with all the goodies I have for it and I'll be right back so in the end here is my first one and Oh, let me tell you the measurement of that, uh, the, of this. So in case you wanted to make one of these, you would want to cut a triangle and the triangle at the tallest point would be eight, uh, let me make sure I'm right, eight and a quarter inches by six inches. So if you um, cut down eight and what did I say, eight and a quarter? Yeah. If you cut down from the top eight and a quarter and you cut from six inches left to right and cut it on a diagonal, you'd have the piece that would fit on each of your pockets. So what I did was I have this um, it came out of a magazine and I absolutely loved it. It's this huge die set or stamp set and I think there's dies too, but I can't figure out what I did with the magazine. Um, it was it came out around Christmas time and it has all these crafty images. I mean everything you'd want. It has your die cutting machine. It has a stamp press. It has inks. It has paints. It has paint brushes and on this side it's got a sewing machine and what looks like a distress oxide ink pad and a camera. You name it, it's got it all. And then on the middle section, and I have more crafty sets, I just haven't um, pulled them all out yet. I'll get this all the way in. And then in the middle section I bought a set from Alta New that's called Crafty Life and and I probably can't show you all of it, but it's almost all, um, it is basically just uh, sentiments that are related to crafting. Crafters gonna craft, 100% natural love, handmade ingredient of happiness, creating is caring, eat, sleep, craft, repeat, glitter everything, happiness is handmade, craft so hard I sweat glitter, let's craft together 24-7, 365, I love that one. Uh, my world is more colorful with you in it. I thought that was sweet. And then it came with these three little dies that go around like this image and that image. So um, that was another set I bought that I really like, but I haven't used yet. And I think the reason I don't use a lot of my sets is because I'm so disorganized. So anyway, I'm getting organized. This um, making these, I think, is a good first step toward me being able to find things. I'm going to label the ends so that I know exactly what's in it. Like this one's going to be crafty. Another one's going to be dogs. Another one will be, you know, 
certain birds, things like that. But I thought my first attempt was fun and I love making uh, my own storage ideas. I hope you enjoyed this, that you give it a thumbs up and subscribe and tell your friends about me on social media because you know I love that. And thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.